Hey there, everybody. This is Chris Bouguet from the AT Tips Cast, and today I have a special guest called named uh, Jason Carroll, and he is the Global Product Manager for Textile. Is that right, Jason? That's right. Thanks, Chris. Yeah, welcome to the AT Tips Cast. How you doing? I'm doing well. Thanks for having me. Happy to be here. <laughs> yeah, I'm so glad you could join us. So, um, here's what uh, I was hoping we could talk about today: is that uh, Text Help has been a longtime supporter and sponsor of the AT Tips Cast, and I put that spot on at the beginning of uh, many of the episodes. And sometimes I wonder how is that really reaching uh, the audience? Are they like I've heard of Text Help, but I don't really know what it is. And I sometimes I think of it sort of like. Um, like if I talk to people about like the Fitbit or Twitter, like you say, what's a Fitbit? Well, it's kind of a thing I wear on my wrist. Or Twitter, it's this uh, app that I can talk to other people in 140 characters, but they don't really know the power behind it. Like, oh, how can I actually use the Fitbit to change my life? How do I use Twitter to, why would I use that? What, what is the benefit of it? And sometimes I think with the spot that we put on the podcast, people hear about it, but they don't really know the inner workings of it. And so that would be a good idea to, to have you on to kind of explain what is Text Help? What what was the what's the uh, what's special about that that company? Sure, it's a good question. Good way to start things. So so Text Help, I, I think you say in, in your openings, you'll say you know provide literacy support software, and, and and that's a good place to start. So when we say literacy support software, to get more specific, you're a struggling reader or a struggling writer, and we have software that can help. And so that comes in, in all sorts of versions. A lot of people may be using our stuff but not realize, you know, it's, it's not called Text Help. Text Help's just the company. So, for example, we have Read and Write Gold and Read and Write for Google. We have products called Fluency Tutor for Google. Uh, we have iPad apps. But the whole idea is, is everything that we create and produce, the idea is, is that's going to help, you know, struggling readers and writers. And uh, so I guess kind of one of the things, if you think about it, that makes us really unique because there's several companies that make several different supports is we try to take a lot of the common kind of uh, assistive and useful technologies for reading and writing, and we put them all in one place. So in the case of Read and Write Gold, for example, you're going to have a toolbar, and the toolbar just can sit at the top of your screen. So it's not like you're going into a separate program or an application. You just have this additional support toolbar at the top of your screen, and that toolbar is going to have tons of useful supports on it that you can use in any environment. So maybe you need text read aloud, or maybe you need help typing, or maybe you need a kind of a mind mapping brainstorming tool. That's all available from the toolbar, and then you can use those tools you know, if you're on the Internet or if you're in a Google Doc or if you're using Microsoft Word. So you don't have to leave your environment. You just use our tools to make it more accessible. And so we do that for Windows machines, read and write gold, uh, which is what I was just talking about. We also have it for a Mac machine um, as well. Have supports for Google. Tons of schools uh, are, are using Google now. They're going to Google Apps for Education, so happy to talk about that a bit, and as well as apps for iPads and that sort of thing as well. Gotcha. So you mean if a school has like Chromebooks, for instance, then you have a solution for Chromebooks where um, back in the day before Chrome, Chromebooks existed, you just had Read and Write Gold, which is a software install. Is that is that what, is that sum it up? Yeah, yeah, it does. You know, it's 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 funny if you if you go back five years, uh, you know, it was pretty much all Windows machines and Macs. You know, so we we had a product that worked on Macintosh, you know, on Apple's, and um, we had a product that worked on. Uh, PCs on Windows machines, and, and that was it. And that was that was simple. And now you have iPads, and not only do you have iPads, you've got like iPads one, two, three, four, five, iPad Mini, iPad Air, <laughs> right? And then you're gonna have iPhones and iPods, and then you're gonna have Android devices. But I I, I can't even name half the Android devices. You know, there's the Nexus and uh, the Samsung Galaxy and all totally. the tablets, right? So so things got it got complicated really fast, and and our customers were saying, hey, we love love your stuff, love what you're doing, but we've got this or we've got that. And, and so you're exactly right. So take Chromebooks, for example. Um, it, three years ago, I don't even know. I think Chromebooks are about three years old now, although it seems like they've been out for a while. Uh, but you can't install. So you don't install software like you would on a Mac or a PC. You can't take that software and install it on a Chromebook. So we come up with a Chrome extension, and that's called Read and Write for Google. And if you just use the Chrome browser, so you don't even have to – on a Chromebook, it works great, but you could use it on a Chrome browser, um, on a Windows or a, or a Mac machine as well. But yeah, you just go right to the Chrome store and, and install their stuff, and you can use it on a Chromebook there as well. So 
it's uh, it's always keeping us busy, look, trying to make sure that we have all these supports on all the different devices that students are using these days. All right, so you mentioned install your stuff or have your stuff available on the Chromebook or the iPad or whatever. What What is the stuff, right? What is What does um, read and write for Google look like or read and write the, for the installation? What are some of the features of the, uh, the software? Sure. So, uh, so I'll hit some of the I'll hit some of the highlights because uh, I know we don't have all night. But uh, it's it's funny. It's grown over time. And if you think of some of the most beneficial features that you could use if you're a struggling reader or writer, I mentioned a couple of them there. You'd have things like text to speech. You'd have word prediction. Uh, you'd have like study tools and research tools and graphic organizer tools. Uh, tools that can. Um, uh, you know, take your text and make an audio file out of it, and and all these different kind of tools that you would have. Uh, so, so those are the types of features that I'm referring to. If you take probably the most common and, and popular, and probably the most useful one, um, would be the text to speech software. So, text to speech software, and I'm sure most of your audience is familiar with that. But it, you know, it's the it's it's software that can read digital text out loud. And it sounds easy enough, and there's plenty of things that, that do that, but if you really dive down into what makes, what makes text-to-speech um, you know, user-friendly and, and actually useful, what makes it, makes it make a difference? And you need a few things. I mean, having a high-quality voice, that's a plus. I don't know if that's, that's something you have to have, but so we have, you know, we have a dozen different voices that you can choose from, even voices in different language. So if, you're learn, if you speak English as a second language, for example, you could pop up uh, Spanish, for example, you could pop up Spanish text, switch to a Spanish voice, have it read aloud, and it would be crystal clear, just like it would in, in English or, or other languages as well. But we also do things like uh, when you when you have the text read aloud, it will highlight the word as it's reading it out loud, and we call that dual color highlighting. And it's really important. First, we highlight the sentence so the student knows what sentence is being read aloud, and then we highlight each word as it's being read aloud. And it really makes sense if you think about it. I use the example often of my daughter, who now she's in second grade and is a great reader. But back in the day, right, when I was reading to her at the evening, what did I do in the evening when I read out loud to her? You were pointing to each word as you went along? Yeah, I'd point to each word as I read it. So she would hear the word, she would see it. Same basic principle that we try to use with text-to-speech. And, and text-to-speech can help kids not only can it help increase fluency and comprehension, it can even help increase writing scores because after students write, they can listen back to what they wrote and they can hear if it sounds right or not. But for that whole comprehension piece and stuff, it's critical to have that kind of dual color highlighting going on. So that's just one kind of real specific example there with text-to-speech, but then multiply that times you know 20 different features uh, that, that you have available. Totally. I think one of the other important parts of uh, text-to-speech is you have a, a teacher, right, who is um, maybe they've moved away from textbooks and now they're looking for web-based content. And so you, ha you know you have readers or you have uh, people who want to access that content and the readers are different levels. So um, that, that might be the perfect website and you'd ask the students to go read it, but some of those students know you'd know that, that that content is too high. So by being able to listen to the content and watch it being read aloud, now you've changed the activity from being a reading activity to a uh, listening activity. Yeah, you're, you're exactly right. I think sometimes we lose that. I, I, I always have heard it called the curse of knowledge. Like we just know how to read at our level, and we forget how hard it is and all the work that goes into trying to understand or trying to read things that are above your level. Mm -hmm. And there's so much that goes into like breaking a word down and understanding its meaning, and it, it, it can kill comprehension, right? So you're mm -hmm. exactly right. Open up that same passage, use text-to-speech to have it read aloud, and it can open up a whole world of possibilities. A, a, a funny thing that uh, – it's not really funny, but something I've noticed over the years is when we find a lot of times in elementary school that a student is a struggling reader, what we do is we, we find some kind of strategy to help that student read. And that's an excellent idea. You should do that because strategies, there are strategies that work, and they will help you learn to read. But strategies don't work overnight. They may take mm -hmm. months or even years to work. And what we end up having are students two years later that can read on grade level because of the strategies, but they miss two years of content. Right. right. So they're right. still fine. So just think if on top of those strategies you gave them access to text-to-speech so they could still access the content, 
then once the strategies kicked in, they would be right where they needed to be. So uh, exactly. it's just food for thought, right? <laughs> yeah, totally, totally. So you mentioned uh, another feature. The other maybe biggest feature would be, I mean, there's tons of features built into the into the toolbar, but uh, one of the other more popular features would be word prediction. And I think word prediction is continuing to grow in popularity as um, predictive text becomes more, like, uh, Part of people's life in their in their phones and their stuff. So tell us, tell me about word prediction. Yeah, you know, I tell you, you you hit it on the uh, you hit the nail on the head there. And I, I actually saw your TED talk where you were talking about some of the same things. Like if you want to see the future, uh, type <laughs> things. It's so funny because I was an assistive technology consultant for ten years before joining um, on with Textile. And if I think back, when I would recommend word prediction, it would really be for students that had significant needs, right? And now anybody with a smartphone uses some form of, of word prediction. Um, or anyone who uses a Google search. Yeah, exactly. As soon as you start typing, it knows, and it helps you do better searches, right? Right. So, um, so it's a funny thing how, how fast it's, it's grown. Uh, but, yeah, word prediction, um, there's there's word prediction that, that exists, like on iPhones and things like that, and then there's there's really, like, solid word prediction programs. And... and I won't get into all the nerdy stuff of what makes them different, but there is a difference between like specialized word prediction software and the things you would get on a phone. And what we find is that that word prediction helps a number of students. You know, I, I remember in the past if a student would have a, a physical disability, so they would have a hard time accessing a keyboard. Word prediction was great because we know for a fact that our word prediction will reduce the number of keystrokes by 60%. And if you have a hard time touching, you know, grabbing the keystrokes and things like that, then then that's a great that's a great feature, but then if you look at it, it can help. Oh, there's just so many kids that could benefit from it. You're you're talking poor spellers. We know that, for example, uh, Martin he he's our, our CTO and and he um, he was involved in, in you know looking at a few studies where, you know, kids don't want to write about cats and dogs, but sometimes they can only spell cat and dog, so that's what they write about. And kids that use word prediction, because they don't have to focus on spelling and things like that, they write longer stories with bigger words, and they can really express themselves better. And, and that's going to help all the way almost K through 12. And another place I see it underutilized, almost like text-to-speech, is for emerging writers, like students, when they're just starting you know, to write and keyboard. Some kids, the younger you are, the more age matters, right? Because if, if there's a 5- and a 6-year-old, well, that six-year-old's got like an extra fifth of their whole life, <laughs> you know, on that on the on the other kid. So having access to things like word prediction can really help level the playing field for those students. And and ESL is another one. If uh, you know the, I guess you would say the the alphabet. We don't necessarily use the alphabet principle here in the U.S. And what I mean by that is, you know, the word P makes a P sound. So why would that be at the front of phone? Uh -huh. <laughs> right. So right. when you when you're learning English as a second language, it's really hard to spell words correctly. And word prediction will, you know, if you start spelling F O N, well, then it would predict, um, it would it would, it would predict phone as as an option. So and just one example of how it works too. Like, so I am going to nerd out on you just a bit, but yeah, currently, I mean, <laughs> currently when we uh, when we're looking at word prediction, I'll have to make sure I have my numbers right. I jotted them down here. But currently, when you look at word prediction, we've got a uh, oh, I think it's about a two hundred and fifty thousand kind of word bank that we look from. So we'll look back a couple of we're kind of looking back a word to try to guess what your next word is going to be, you know. But we're, okay. we're we're taking that up, and now we're moving from yeah from two hundred fifty thousand, which would be three word phrases. So at most, you're kind of looking a word behind and a word after to try to determine what you're going to type. Okay. That helps it be grammatically correct and things like that, but it's not always exactly what you would want. But uh -huh. we're scaling that up to a 10 million word phrase bank, so we're looking at five words now instead of three. So we could theoretically work like three words back to determine what you're typing next. Provide more context for what you're trying to type. Okay. It really does, because people in word prediction are a lot of times focused on like having word banks and things like that, but... With that big of a database, you're looking at. We use the help of Google, who scanned pretty much every book that's uh, that's been in existence. And because mm -hmm. of that, if you know, if, if 
if the word you're looking for is not on that list, it's probably never been typed in the history of books. <laughs> you know, so so you get a really grammatical um, kind of accurate example there. A, a good example is if I gave you of its, what could come after that? Of its, of its, I don't know, of okay. its. But it could be, there could be, it's, the reason it's hard to think of is because there's, there's like an unlimited amount of things you could be talking about there, yeah. right? But what if I said some of its? Some of its features, some of its time. What if I said some, S-U-M? Some of its parts. Yeah, very good, right? Yeah. See how that extra, some, S some of its? narrowed that down so much more to provide better context, where before it's very difficult to do that, and now by by expanding it about that much, it just opens up a whole new world of opportunities, uh, anywhere from spelling to writing to to all those kind of things. So anyways, like I said, I nerded out on you a bit, but it, it makes it easy. <laughs> just, just the kind of stuff we're working on right now. <laughs> That's really exciting. That's really exciting. I, you know, I we work with word prediction uh, in my job as well, and you see the students use it, and... Um, we use it in conjunction with other tools that are in the in the toolbar. So one of my favorite strategies for the longest time has been uh, marrying word prediction with uh, the voice note feature, uh, which is also built into the at least the toolbar that we use, uh, uh, the install installed toolbar on the on the PCs. Um, and so the idea is is that a student has trouble uh, generating their. I mean, they can they can tell you what they want. You know, you can pull them back into the, into the back of the room, and they would tell you their their essay. But it's writing their essay, getting it actually out where they'd have difficulty. So the, the idea is what we've taught students to do is they record the voice, like record one sentence at a time, maybe um, put it in a table or in a graphic organizer where they just record their voice and then using word prediction they go back and they type it in. So their thoughts are already out and then they're typing it in and so many um, uh, I think other AT professionals might say well why don't I just use like uh, speech recognition software and um, that's it. I know that's built into the toolbar as well, but I like using this first because it teaches them to use the keyboard, where speech recognition doesn't necessarily teach them the keyboarding skill. It doesn't give them the practice of keyboarding. So, um, you know, different students, different strategies, and you, know, you find the right strategy for each student, but that's one one where you marry the different tools that are available in the, in the toolbar, and I found it really helps students. Yeah, I really like that. That's good, and I agree with you. I think using maybe speech recognition or dictation I kind of like that when you're ready for your, you know, for your final paper or a draft. But for that whole organ, for that brainstorming process and all that kind of stuff, I like staying away from that and doing more of the kind of strategy stuff that, uh, that that you're talking about there. But you're right. There, there's so many features. You know, we covered we covered two, and then you mentioned another one. But you know, there's there's so many on there. But if you get into writing, for example, you know, there are all the different kind of stages of writing, all the way from brainstorming to pre, you know, to doing your draft and uh, going back and doing editing and all that and Anything from advanced spell check to homophone check and all those kind of things uh, to the graphic organizer itself, you have those sort of things available there in, in Read and Write Gold. And read and Write for Google specifically is, is for Google Apps for Education users. It doesn't have all the things on there um, that Read and Write Gold has, but you also got to consider that TechSelp's been around for 20 years. And read and Write for Google for Google's been around for two Right, yeah. so, so we're we're slowly but surely getting all the things and some kind of extra neat uh, kind of tools and features and stuff like that built into Google uh, as we go. In fact, you know we've really seen our we we've seen our Google usage it is just skyrocketed. And I know you're a big fan of the the UDL approach in schools, and and it, we find that often we find that often actually when we're talking about reading right for Google because as a Chrome extension. You just go to the Chrome Web Store and install it, and there it is. And and it's there. Yeah. yeah, if I go home and log in on my computer and sign into Chrome, there it is. And if I don't have my computer, if you'd be kind enough to let me borrow your computer for a minute, I could <laughs> sign in, and there it is, right? You go to the public library. Yeah, exactly. And so, and also, like, if, say, Google doesn't update, and now, for whatever reason, one of the features aren't working correct. Well, so... We'll figure that out, you know, immediately. We'll publish an up an update, and then within eight hours, everybody in the world, you know, <laughs> has the new extension. So it's just anytime there's an update or anytime there's a new feature, you just you just have it. There's not a big kind of 
uninstall, reinstall, update, all that kind of stuff. So I think because of that, it's so easy to push out and deploy and access. It really is helping with universal design for learning. It, it's helping it really come to life. You know, it's it's been talked about for years and years, but I think this really helps. The ease of use of the technology really helps with it. Totally, totally. So, all right, so you talked about Google Apps uh, for education. You kind of led us in that direction. So, w what exactly? Um, what are some of the features there that are in Google Apps or in, in the extension? Sure. So it's a little tricky, and, and we're we're always growing it because. So currently, if you think about Google, Google Docs is the equivalent of Microsoft Word, right? Right. So currently, if you install the extension, um, you go to open a Google document after you install the extension, and you're going to have a little toolbar that you can pull down and that toolbar is going to have text to speech and word prediction. It's going to have what we call study skills tools, so basically highlighters that you can go and highlight paragraphs of text and collect those highlights in a new Google document. You can even highlight individual words and have a nice little vocabulary list built and it'll include the definition and a picture and uh, kind of a little notes area and all that. Hold on one second, hold on. I gotta tell you, those those two features that you just mentioned are huge, and I don't want to just gloss over them because the, the teachers that when I show them that, it, the, that's jaw dropping, right? They're like, "Wait a second, wait! I can just put in my vocabulary words for the study guide that I want the students to study, and all of a sudden, it comes up with a definition of each one of those words and a picture and a place where I can add notes so students can again record their own voice or type type whatever that word is in a sentence. I mean, teachers use that all the time. Like I said, for study guides." Um, or for you know spelling tests, you know here's the spelling list for the week. You know here's all your spelling words. Now you can uh, use it in a sentence. You know that kind of stuff. So that I think is a huge uh, feature. And then the highlights that you mentioned. Um, that uh, again, I remember back in the day when I had to do like a research project. What I do is I go to the library. I get the books out. I would look for information. Uh, I couldn't highlight the books until I was in college and I owned the books and then I could highlight information but I would uh, instead of highlighting I would say oh here's a piece of information and I'd put it on a note card and then I'd have my stack of note cards and then I would uh, take those note cards and I'd reshuffle them around to put them in my own words and then I'd write my essay right and I think um, that experience when I when I talk to teachers about it they're like yeah yeah that's what I did too <laughs> they really can relate but now here we are where we have these digital tools like what you're just talking about that's built in um, to the Read and Write Gold. Well, that's in both Read and Write Gold, the installation and the extension in, in Google Apps. Um, now what they can do is highlight that information just like we did, but it collects the information for them together and then they just have to kind of put it in their own words, right? I mean, yep. it, that's the, the collecting part. Yep. So if you're doing an essay on, let's say, um, how many colors are there in the... Four. There are four different colors, right? So you could, um, if you're doing your essay on polar bears, right? It's like everything I find on polar bears and what they're eating, I'm going to mark in blue. That's what that's their diet. But everything about where polar bears live, I'm going to mark that in green. And everything on on polar bears or people who study polar bears, that's uh that's going to be in uh, yellow. And then I hit the collect highlights button, and it groups all of those things together so that it's sort of um, it hasn't written the essay for me, but it's collected all my notes so that it, it chunked those things together. All the blue stuff goes together, all the green stuff goes together, all the yellow stuff goes together. So that now I have my notes in one spot, sort of like I would in the old days shuffle my cards together. Um, and now I can start putting that in my own words. Yeah. Oh, that's why I love hanging out with you, those ideas. <laughs> <laughs> that's great. Like, you really, you really... As long as you've kind of got that creative mindset, you can do so many different things in this, right? Whether it's main idea in one color and supporting detail in another, or whether you're building a vocabulary list for students and then sharing it out, or having students build their own vocabulary list. Uh, there's this, there's so many different things you can do with just those highlighting features. Um, yeah, yeah you're, you're exactly right. And then there's also a dictionary, a talking dictionary, a picture dictionary. Uh, all those kind of things are built in as well. Now, keep in mind specific to Google, that toolbar is just in Google Docs, right? And we thought, well, that's good, and that's where we started. Read and Write for Google started as just kind of a, a little project to see how fast it would take off and people were interested and people really liked it. So then we expanded it, and, and now we have a version that when you, in, well, when you install it, you'll also get it, uh, we just call it a web toolbar. So it puts a little icon in your, in your address bar that on any web page, you just click the little icon, and now you have a web toolbar with the same tools, the text-to-speech doesn't have word prediction, but it's got the text-to-speech and the highlighting tools and dictionary and picture dictionary, 
all those sort of things. It even has this cool little simplify tool. I don't know, have you played with it? Mm -hmm. Oh, that's new. The, the simplify tool is uh, we released the simplify tool and speech input a couple of months ago. So you can do speech input in Google Docs. Okay. And then on web pages, we have a simplify tool. And what it does is if you click it when you're on a web page, it kind of declutters the page. So it pulls mm -hmm. all the text out, and it, it just gives you just the text on kind of a, a white background. Because you know if you're on, like, CNN and you've got all these ads, yeah. click, me, click me, right, or, yeah, look over here. So it removes, just takes the content out and puts it on a white background. But what, what on top of that, it still gives you access to the toolbar. So you can still highlight the text and, ex and extract it, you know, collect your highlights or use the text to speech. And on top of that, it's got a little simplify button, a plus and minus on the top. So if you hit the minus, it will start reducing the amount of text. Like summarizing it. It, it actually, ah, so just to differentiate it a bit, instead of summarizing it, it just reduces the amount of text. Okay, okay. So, so you, you know, you, you can already see the inherent issues that you could have with some students on it, but there are some students that if you have a 10-page doc, it's just not going to get anywhere. So... Exactly. You know who that is? That's most students, right? Yeah, exactly. It's like me when I get on Facebook and someone has put a big rant. You know what yeah. I do is just scroll right by it. So um, too much yeah, stuff. So you'll keep the main ideas but may lose some of the details that go along with it. Uh, but it's still a great tool for some students. And even if you don't use that part, the simplify piece itself, the declutter part, uh, and then still being able to use the toolbar, is, it's, it's great. So that covers... Oh, go ahead. Sorry. I was just going to say, you know what I love about that is that it's all in one toolbar, right? So I know there are other extensions that do that, but why go use a different extension when you have it all in one place? Yep. Yeah, yeah, right. It, the, and the other extensions that do it, then you still need something else like to do the text-to-speech and all this. So, yeah. Exactly. You're ju it's a juggling act of using different um, extensions or different apps when, when this is all built into one, one contained area. Yeah, so that covers web pages. So we do all that stuff on web pages when you're using Chrome. And we talked about Google Docs when you're using Chrome. And then we also, if you have PDF files or EPUB files, or even Kezi files, that you that you would have, happen to put in Google Drive, then if you have our extension installed and you click on them, they'll open in our viewer. So then our viewer will go through and, you know, it'll read, it'll read the text aloud, allow you to make annotations, so you can do fill-in-the-blank things. If you put a worksheet up, you know, you can do little typewriter annotations. Um, yeah, so just, just all that stuff on a PDF or an EPUB file. Oh, that's yeah, fantastic. That's yeah, and then we ran into the problem of about PDF files, some of them not being accessible, or if i got a worksheet here, how do I get that in a PDF? So we just added even... Uh, it's just been busy, Chris, I tell you. We just added a new add-on called Snapverter. So if you install Snapverter, uh, there's a free trial with it. You get 10 free scans and then another scan each week. So if you install it, you'll always have access to some scans. But you can just snap a picture of any page and drop it in a special folder that we'll put in Google Drive for you, wait okay. a couple of minutes, and now it's going to be an accessible PDF. So your image will be an accessible PDF. You can then open it with Read and Write for Google and use those typewriter annotation tools to fill in the blank or have things read out loud and all that. So That's wild. I can't wait to play with that. That sounds so cool. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it's good. So that's, uh, yeah, so that's Read and Write for Google. It's definitely keeping us busy, and, and customers have been great, and there's all kinds of feedback, and we keep trying to add to it and all those kinds of things. So cool. What's happening next? What's coming up next for Text Help? Uh, well, so we're going to continue to add some things to Read and Write for Google. There's going to be some new features there that we're, uh, we're hoping to add to it soon. And um, so, like, for example, something in Read and Write Gold is you can select text and turn it into an audio file. So um, we're going to add that to Read and Write for Google as well, so you can go out and select text, make it an MP3 file that you can listen to. Uh, a couple of things there that we're doing. We're, we're also, we've released something called Fluency Tutor for Google. And it's for, if you know, it's, it's, it's kind of one of those learning to read tools to where we have hundreds of passages that you can share with students Students can listen to them, and then they can record. They can hit record button and read it, and then that's shared back with the teacher. So the teacher can then, uh, you know, listen to it to see how they did, and download or, and uh, and score it, and give feedback. Mm -hmm. So that's Fluency Tutor for Google that we've been working on. Uh, we're also working on. So we have an iPad app, and this is like new, new stuff. So uh, okay. I'm not sure how much I, I'm not sure how much I'm supposed to say here, but <laughs> but we've got. Uh, We've got an iPad app, and the problem with iPad apps has always been, like, so it does great word prediction, right? But if I want to use that word prediction when I'm typing an email or 
when I'm in a Google Doc on my iPad, well, it doesn't do me any... I would have to type it, I guess, in the app and then copy and paste copy it. Copy and paste it. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so it's not really kind of a... I don't know. It's not Again, really. it's the juggling. You're juggling apps now. So, so what we're what we're doing is we're we've got something in place that we hope to have ready uh, here, in hopefully around ATIA time. That uh, would would be an iPad um, version of Read and Write. So it would be Read and Write for iPad that would work in any app in Google Docs on an iPad. Um, you know, in, in whatever it would be that you're using on an iPad, and it would include the text to speech and the word prediction and the picture dictionary and the regular talking dictionary and all those kind of things. So that's something we're pretty excited about because people have been asking for something like that for a long time now. So. Awesome, and so it's that's coming up soon. Like you said, ATI is in January, so and uh, right on right on the heels of that. I don't know which one's first or if it's a dead even race here, but we also so read and write gold. We're on version eleven. Um, for the PC, and we're coming out with it's it's, it's eleven and a half. This is going to be read and write gold eleven point five. Okay. And, and the big changes there are a, a lot of people. Well, if you're using read and write gold for for Windows, then you're using a Windows machine, and a lot of people are now using Office three sixty five. Not as much yep. as Google, but some people are using it. So this is going to allow you to use read and write gold with Office three sixty five, and it's also going to have if you're a current user. Um, the way we read PDFs, we use something called PDF Allowed. It's a little add-in into Adobe. So we're going to kind of get away from the Adobe thing and have our own PDF viewer, and that way you can use the whole toolbar in the PDF. So you'd have access to those highlighting tools and uh, it, you know all the dictionary and all those things, not just text-to-speech. That's fantastic. I know a teacher has been wanting that too when I show it to him. Hey, how can we use Yeah, so that's awesome, awesome. Yeah. Cool. Well, it sounds lots, exciting. Lots of stuff going on. Yeah, and I've got a, another little project too. I, I won't get into it too much because I know we're running out of time. But um, for all those Google Apps for Education users, we find a lot of people really wanting additional training and real like real life how to strategies about how I can implement this and that. So we're working on it. It's pretty exciting actually. Um, the professional development solution for Google Apps users, and it's it's not just go in and watch a few videos. It it takes strategies that have been shown to work. So there's there's some literature behind it that says yeah this strategies work somewhere. Uh -huh. and we take that and we say here's the strategy here's what it is, here's how you would use that in the Google Apps environment, and then here's some specific examples. So for example, if it's, maybe you're doing it using some kind of Google Form or Google Doc, then we'd mm -hmm. have some examples that you could take and you could take and make those your own, and uh, we'd have some little how-to videos in case you don't really know how to create a form. Those would be in there as well. It's pretty exciting stuff, so so we're gonna have this thing ready to go soon. So we've been been very busy. That sounds really exciting. I can't wait to check those out. Do, do, do you have a name for that? Do you know what that's called or? Yeah, we do. It's gonna be it's Teach. It's just Teach for Google. So for Google? Uh, yeah. So so that will be yeah. That's that's where we're going with that. So lots of exciting stuff going on there. Yeah, that does sound exciting. All right, well, Jason, anything else? Like, so if people are listening to this right now, and they're like, all right. I want to check out Read and Write. How do they contact you? What's the best way for them to uh, to learn more about Text Help? They want to get Read and Write for one of their whatever solution, whatever uh, you know uh, hardware they're using. What's the what's the best avenue for them to take to to learn more about Text Help or get in contact with you? Yeah, sure. So I mean, the website is just www.texthelp.com. So okay. if you go to texthelp.com and click on products, it'll show you all of our different products, and you can check it out. I keep a blog, and that's just going to be blog dot texthelp.com so you can go there and read up on some that's not you know I'll put when we're doing if we got a new product release I'll do it but other than that you can check out the last three or four posts it's just kind of ed tech and assistive tech kind of related stuff you know it's just general useful stuff there I can and, vouch for it because I subscribe to the blog I get the blog posts I read them cool there'll be a new one coming out yeah there'll be a new one coming out tomorrow so uh and then if, if you just want to get in touch with me, that that's uh, you're more than welcome to just send me an email. And so that's J dot Carol and Carol is C A R R O L L. So two R's, two L's. So J dot Carol at texthelp.com. So uh, so one of those three things that should take care of uh, of whatever someone needs. Okay, and I'll make sure I put all of those links on the AT Tips Cast website so people can just if they go to that website, they can click click on that and have access to all of it. I mean, Text Up has been on that website forever, so people should know that website already. Cool. Well, Chris, I really appreciate you uh, you having me on. This has been great. Yeah, thank you for coming on and 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 me clarifying for people what exactly uh, Text Help is and Read and Write and Read and Write Gold and all the different. I mean, it's so exciting what you guys are doing. Uh, like my colleague uh, Sally Norton Dar says, and I think she's got she nailed the phrase. She's like. 
these guys know what they're doing. <laughs> these guys have the solutions, right? And so um, that's why we always look to you. So really appreciate it. I know uh, we in our in the school district that I work for. Um, it's helped so many students, whether they had a disability or whether they didn't. They, we, we just put it out as a solution for, for every student, and um, it's changed lives. You know, you're really doing good work. So, thanks, JP. That's excellent. Hey, I really appreciate you. Uh, I really appreciate you saying. And I should say too, with the read and write for Google piece, it's that freemium model. So we took, we did. Speaking to what you said, we took what we thought was the most valuable piece, which is text to speech. That remains free for everyone forever. And if you're a teacher or an educator, if you just want, if you can have access to everything for free, so that you can learn it and, and use it as needed, and build your vocabulary list and all those sort of things. The whole thing is free. I mean, there's parts of it that are free for anybody, but if you're a teacher, it's free because you're a teacher. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> There'll be a little. Yeah, and if, if you have questions, you can let me know. But when you're in there, you'll see there's there's a way to go. If, if you're a teacher, you just fill out some information and. It confirms your, you will confirm your teacher, and then you just have access to it for, for free. So. That's, that's awesome. All right, well, thank you so much, Jason. Thanks for coming on to the AT Tips cast, and we'll talk to you soon. We'll see you down at ATIA. Yeah, I look forward to it. See you, Chris. All right, talk to you later.